Chorus. I need you to report and report now to the Dominican Republic. Mm. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. The Queen's Supreme Court mm. is bringing the seat to the Dominican Republic. July 12th through the 16th, we are going on an all-inclusive mm. food, drink, activities, and lodging, mm. baby, to the Dominican Republic. Get your tickets on www.wetravel.com, baby. That's www.wetravel.com. Well, look for the link in the bio. But, child, honey, we are going to have an amazing time. Now, all you got to do is get your passport and get your plane ticket. We got everything else, girl. Tickets are available now. Don't waste no time, baby. Don't waste no time. Child, July 12th through the 16th, the Queen's Supreme Court in the Dominican Republic. This is very personal work for me. Politics. Politics. I believe I was called to Sex. tell my story, use my voice, be a Gay. voice for Gay. the community, to speak Gay. to Gay. and for a community of people Gay. that's Gay. been ignored, denied, love, love, love relationships. relationships, religion. This is my life's work. Religion, religion. I want to use words to. Uplift, Every heal, single inspire, encourage. Do something different. Something different. Every Monday at 10. Good day, thinkers, thought leaders, progressives, and dreamers. I'm Craig the Writer Stewart, and this is so much to say. These are my thoughts in my voice on black shit, white shit, gay shit, and everything in between. Today we're talking to Mark, and he had a hair transplant surgery. Yes. Um, and it's called what? What's the process called? Why are you asking these questions like this? It's just hair transplant surgery. That's it's, it. <laughs> okay. It's some I fancy it was, term, but yeah. I, I can't remember. So if somebody is interested in doing it, they would just Google hair transplant surgery. Yes, it'll come up. Okay. It'll so you up. have you've had it done twice. twice. Is it painful? No, not really. You're asleep. So it's not Oh, they really put you to sleep. Yeah, so it's not really painful. It's uncomfortable. Not painful. after the fact? Or like during right it. before you go to sleep, you she's already started and it's gonna be a little uncomfortable because you gonna. I mean, they numb the area, but you feel somebody like <laughs> like digging in, grabbing hair, and all that kind of stuff. So it's kind of uncomfortable at first. You what would you sleep. compare it to? Because like for example, like it's it's not worse than going to the dentist. Well, see, the de- the dentist doesn't bother me. Oh, so like uh, for example, like I get acupuncture, and people always think, "Oh my god, that feels so horrible." Like I mean, they so imagine it's a bunch needle of needles, is. but you really don't feel it unless you have tension in your body somewhere. But they're really fine needles, right? Yeah, but it's needles, and you fit, and you know it's a bunch of them. But what mm-hmm. happens is, unless you're really tense in a specific area in your like the tissue in your body, you really don't feel it. What it feels like, the way that I liken it, it's like. You ever had like a, a hair pulled by your sock? Oh yeah, yeah. It feels yeah, like that. Like if you true. feel anything, that's what it feels yeah. like. And it's a quick, sharp little something, right. and you kind of feel it, but that's not painful. You yeah. know what I'm saying? But you be like, ah, it's more like of a shock than anything. Uh, that's probably what it feels like first, right before you go to sleep. But you're gonna go to sleep though. They're gonna give you some pills to uh, to drink. She's gonna be talking, and you're gonna be out. And if it takes too long, you may wake up while they're still working, but it's probably like going to be finishing up. But it's not bad. Your head's going to be swollen. You're going to look like SpongeBob for like three or four days. Um, so then that means I need to not go anywhere yeah, you ain't if going I'm going to do this. That, uh-uh, not that way. And not be I, on camera I, or anything. You, like. not. Oh, wear a hat. Can you wear a hat or no? Not really. I mean, you can, but, but it's, it's like it's like this. They don't give you anything <laughs> to kind of like... Like what? For example, like I had LASIK surgery. I had my eyes done. Mm-hmm. Um, and they gave me these like gargles. Not gargles, but like these glasses. So like, they had a pair of glasses for me to wear when right. I went to sleep. Because mm-hmm. they don't want like lint or dust getting in your eyes, eyes while you sleep. Or while you're sleeping to be rubbing your eyes. True. And they gave me a pair for when I showered. Because okay. they didn't want the water and stuff to hit your eyes. So I was just wondering, like, they don't give they, you some sort of a... Not really. They give you a case for your pillow just to stop blood from coming. And your head is going to be wrapped up for, like, the first two days. But not really. I mean, it's going to go down naturally, you know. So you're just going to be ugly for a few days. And they're going to cut your hair, and it's going to be a weird haircut. It's not, like, a stylish haircut. It's just 
<laughs> they couldn't get a regular barber to just come in and. I, that's what I thought. I was like, Do your nasty fade or something. <laughs> nah, she gonna just get the clippers and uh, I guess removing the hair from the area that they're gonna pull and it's. She ain't trying to do it in no style, so it's not like okay, let me even it out. Uh-uh. So you can't really be going anywhere. Yeah, no, no, you're not going. See, because even if the swelling goes down, you still got that patch in the back of your hair wherever yeah. they took the hair from. Right. Um. Because I got the hair, I got it done a Sunday, and I just assumed that it was gonna be because it was my second time doing it. First time mm-hmm. it wasn't that swollen. Um. But I was like, yeah, I'll just go to work the next day. When I got done and my head was swollen, I text my um my managers like, yeah. Uh, I got hair transplant surgery and I'm not going to be able to come in just tell everybody I got a headache. <laughs> so there was like a two day headache and it finally went down. Yes. So the very first time, take me to the first time because the first time you had it done, you said that it wasn't, you weren't really pleased with it but then the second time that you had it done, yes. you liked the results. Yes. Um, the first time I had it done in Virginia, um, I think it was still fairly new. The process. Still, like, yeah, it's trying to figure it out. And also, I don't think a lot of African-American men were getting that procedure. So they didn't know how to deal with the curly texture. Right, yeah. So, um, that quote-unquote nigga. Right. Uh-huh. <laughs> well, I don't have nigga hat, but, you know. I mean. Praise the Lord, everybody. Um, so <laughs> I got the procedure done. Um, of course, it was done by uh, two white ladies. Um, mm-hmm. And... Um, I was very hopeful. They kind of drew in. What they do is they bring you in for the consultation and they draw, get a marker and try to see where you want your hairline to come down to. So I was very. So you can actually have your hairline move down. In theory, they they kind of get an idea. Like you say, okay, I want to fill in to this level. So they'll get a marker and just kind of do you know fill it in to get an idea of how you would look. If it comes down that level. So it's know. not just filling in where it is. Mm-hmm. They can kind of... So if you're in recession, if your hair is in yes, recession... They can bring it back. Okay. Um, now, don't be trying to come... If your hair if your hair is back to the crown of your right. head, don't be trying to bring it all the way back right. down to your forehead. But sometimes you can, uh, you can overdo that as well. So mm. it needs to look natural. You know, you don't want to come down right above your eyebrows. Right. And People they, see you yesterday right, and right, you ain't got right. no hair. And then you come back next Tuesday... <laughs> hair everywhere and you're like oh yeah you got bangs yeah <laughs> right. okay so i got the procedure done um also note that during that time that was like uh like i said they were just now starting it out what year so, was that uh, i want to say 2015 yes 2015 okay yeah so um uh, i got it done and it takes at that time it took about six no about uh, yeah, about six months or so. No, it was over six months. I want to say a year for it to come in for, for you to like finally see the full results of it. So that's a significant difference between then and now. Mm-hmm. Uh, now it takes about five months for you to see new growth because mm-hmm. uh, what they take is uh, plasma out of your blood and then they inject the areas and it's supposed to speed up the process of uh, the growth. So they transplant hair mm-hmm. from a different section of your head. Yes. But then they also inject it with your own plasma. Yes. And it's, I want it's what done. Jamie Foxx had. Yeah. I want what uh, LeBron got, too. He got it done as well. Oh, do I need to go and look at his? Yeah. He, you know, LeBron was going back there. That's why he was wearing all those. That's why he was wearing those headbands. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But now he's free. <laughs> he's been delivered. <laughs> he ain't got Listen, to wear the headbands. You know, anymore. because typically when you think about hair transplant surgery... I mean, I, I guess you think about white men. I would think about white yeah, men. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah. this is something that's really been opened up to to, 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 to black men, but even yeah. to women, because women tend to go I've bald. Seen women in, in there as well. Yeah, women tend to go bald or thin uh, in the crown of their heads. Yeah, that's all I was about to say. Now, uh, ladies, I know some of you want edges. Right. That might help <laughs> you with your edges too. Right. So you went in. You had this. You went in on a Sunday. Was that the first? Well, time? this is the second. The time. second the time. First okay. time I I took leave from work. I can't remember the exact date that I went in, but I had done my research uh, with it, and I was really hopeful. So there are different options for it. You can get the tattoo procedure done. I'm not sure if you've heard of that one before. I have. What, do you, what, what is it? It's kind of like where they um, they trim all your hair off your head, and then they tattoo the illusion of hair. Only thing is with that, you have to maintain that style forever. You get what I'm because saying? Because they done tattooed it. Right? Yeah, they tattooed it. So it's kind of like you don't get that versatility of of changing up your hairstyle because it's now all flat and low and tattooed and that looks extra painful really to me um Mm. so i did consider that do you have tattoos one 
Okay. And it was painful. I was so going to get a imagine. tattoo. I almost went and got a tattoo last Friday. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. And I, at the last minute, I... This would been your first tattoo? Yeah. I don't have, I'm pure. Oh. Amen. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, yeah. So, I I hit him at the last minute and said, you know what? I have to feel 100% about it. Yeah. And although I would like to have a tattoo yeah. but I was thinking, thinking about having like a, a basic tattoo on my hand and it would say the writer yeah something but simple but I wasn't really sold on it sold on it that's and how so, I was before I got my first yeah one. so yeah, I'm just like no so but imagine this, somebody the, tattooing you on your scalp yeah <laughs> just yeah. da 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 right so I, and I are you asleep for that process or do you know the videos that I saw on YouTube they was they wasn't asleep oh. they was uh, alert so um yeah, that's that was something that I decided not to go go through with. So I decided the hair transplant uh, took about a year or so to see results. Um, definitely not what I anticipated. Um, mm-hmm. Felt like it was a waste of money. Uh, so when I moved to Atlanta, um, the reset that my hair receding still continued. Uh, probably got a little bit worse. So was your hair receding or was it um, thinning or both? Uh, more so receding uh, on the what what are these called like the temple area. yeah so that's where I received it um, so it was getting really really bad and I was getting really really self conscious about yeah. that so I looked into it again I considered doing the the man weave um, but that seemed like it was too much maintenance honestly. right which I had I did a podcast for those of you who may not have listened to that podcast um, I think it was called man weave or something I called it something but I did a podcast with a guy yeah. named Michael Ray he does. He wears them and he does them. Mm-hmm. Um, these hair pieces or installations or it's a lot of work, right? It looks like it. And see, he's a hairstylist, and he said, you know, it's he's it's second nature to him, so he just kind of goes in. And, right. <laughs> I don't have that kind of time right. to be doing that. Exactly. Um, but then even also, I just kind of feel like. I think people would have a certain perception of you. And it made me wonder about yeah. women who wear weaves, yeah. especially those, not so much women who, who have hair and they just wear them to, to fill styles. their hair or yeah. The, yeah, for different styles, but for women who have no hair mm-hmm. and they wear we- weaves or wigs, it made me wonder, like, what's that, what's that period like where they actually have a conversation with the man? Oh, or a woman that they're dating, you know, no judgment. Right, right. Um, so you know this isn't really my hair, right? right? right. You know what I'm saying? Or oh, what's that period like when they actually take it off? Because according to Michael Ray, the guy who who does those man weaves, he 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 will not let anybody see him without it. Really? So he he's not doing it for style. He does it because he he, he he does it for style, but he needs it. Okay. okay yeah, he okay, needs okay, it, okay, okay. but he does not want anybody to see him without. It. He said nobody will ever, not any, even wow, somebody he was in a relationship with. Yeah, he has a couple family members that have seen him when he's home. But they know I'm, not to bring out a I camera. Mean, prior to that, what was life like for him? You get what I'm saying? Like, oh, right. He's not always had a man weave, so. Right. Um, so, yeah, so he doesn't want anybody. Himself. But also, I think, um, like, in today's time, it's really acceptable for women to get, like, weaves. Like, that's, like, the thing now. Right. And that used to be an issue, I believe, in our culture where it's, like, Women would try to hide the fact that it is a wig. So now it's kind right. of like it was almost yeah yeah it's yeah. like it was taboo. They like, weren't as we, transparent about yeah, it. Yeah, we know it's a wig, but mm-hmm. you're supposed to act like it's your real hair. But now it's just like you come out today, you got 22 inches of blonde hair. Tomorrow is red, you know. So we know now it's a wig. Right. But I wonder, does that same um, acceptance? No, it happen? doesn't, because okay. according to according to him, Michael, he was saying that. You know, there's a lot of um, judgment, mm-hmm. and he was saying that a lot of women judge men who wear right. That's so man weird. weaves. <laughs> you know, because they just feel like, okay, just let your hair go bald. Like, yeah. why you, you why you need to go through all that? That's just too much maintenance, yes. or that's too quote unquote feminine. Right. You know what I mean? For a man to be that concerned, but mm-hmm. that you know, because for years, like. From what I've heard, that that high top that Steve Harvey was wearing was, was a wig. Yeah, I didn't realize wig. that. Time. I, I didn't, didn't know that either. Everything. I mean, I knew his line was extremely perfect, was <laughs> but I did not know that that was a wig. Yeah. I mean, because I can't imagine opting to wear that. Even if high top face were in, I can't imagine wearing that yeah. that high thing on top of oh, my head. Oh, I can see maybe doing one, but yeah. not that high <laughs> every day. Like you don't have any hair, and then you're gonna go and yeah. do a six inch high <laughs> high top. Right, right. So there are uh, other options. So you didn't want to do the tattoo. And you no. decided to do this to do the transplant. transplant. So you did it in Virginia with these two white women, mm-hmm. but it was a place. It wasn't like yeah, in the yeah, back yeah, alley. Yeah. No, 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 no. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Now, how yeah, much did that first one cost? Uh, they were actually about the same price. 
Uh, 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 before we tell you how much it costs, I have to let you know that I will be in Chicago on March 10th for a signing. It's a part of the Queen's Supreme Court brunch. Take a listen. Chicago, Charlie said you was ready, honey, and we on the way. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. March 10th and March 11th, the Queen's uh. Supreme Court is bringing you a two-day weekend extravaganza, bitch. Join us for brunch on March 10th with me and King Dave. And bitch, on March 11th, the court will be in session, girl. Get your tickets, get your tickets, bitch, get your tickets. Don't get Diva wrong. And the real is so fear. Challenge to turn Chicago out, bitch, and we ain't never done it before. Girl, get them tickets. Listen, www.eventbrite.com. Don't beat me there, bitch. Beat me there. <laughs> this is going to be one for the books. 4000 a piece. It was 4000 mm mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, so, so they charge you based on the what well, they call them graphs. Um, I'm not sure if you saw a billboard in Atlanta, but it, uh-huh. it is a big billboard that says two dollar per graph, and graphs are considered the uh, the piece of hair that are taken out and placing it in your. Receipt so is a graph like a section, or that's it's like? like a, I'm thinking it's a piece of hair. That's what they consider a graph. Because uh, if, well, it's, $2, it's, like, cause so if it's, it's two dollars, because if it's two dollars a graph. <laughs> Shit. But you got to think about how detailed that work is to take a piece of hair and it has to be connected to some skin and whatever else is under there. They have to then plug it into the other area and it has to take root. So it's not Mm -hmm. just like shaving some hair and then just just sprinkling it over the the ball area and it growing. You know, it's not like... And it's if you're trying to create a new line. Yeah, exactly. A A new new hairline. Yeah, (laughs) so they got to... So from the last time that I saw you, it does look fuller now. Yeah, but I do wear um, some stuff in it as well. It's called like kabuki, like hair fibers. I do put that in time to time to give it like a crisp, clean look. Right. Um, they you usually, have that in now? Yes, yes. They usually say that you need two of the surgeries to get that fullness. Granted, Eight I gram. didn't have two. But, but they were years apart. They were years apart, and the first one wasn't done correctly. Correctly. So if I would have had both of them done at this place, I believe I would have been satisfied with the results. So if you're supposed to do two, how much time should be between them? Like, how close Uh, together? I would say wait a year or so um, until Uh you see the full results. And then they'll know where to go in for the next part. Exactly. But at the same time, you have to keep in uh, mind that if your hair is still receding, you know, that may come an issue as well. So I was told by the doctors, like, you're... You know, how old are you? And I'm like, and I think at that time I was like 28 or so. So I still may be receding some with my hair. So that may be an issue as well. So you didn't pay these people to put some hair in there and it's going to draw back. It's going to still draw back. (laughs) (laughs) Right. That could be that could be the case. Hopefully it's not. Um, But we shall see. Um, But I do plan to go back and get one more done. Um, When is that? uh, Probably next year. So another four grand. Yeah. It's not like a big ish, uh, pressing issue right well, now. You know, when we had this conversation, I thought you said it was about a thousand dollars. No, we ain't saying nothing about no thousand. You think them people about to do all that work for a thousand? I thought, the, I thought, because, <laughs> because, I, I, see, I thought there were two different processes. I thought one was the hair transplant, mm-hmm. and I thought the other one was the plasma. plasma. They, they can be, but if you get the hair transplant surgery, they're going to automatically do the plasma now. But you can opt in just to have the plasma treatment done. Like, if you just wanted to go and say, I don't want a surgery, I just want a pl- uh, plasma, it's supposed to stunt, uh, well, stop, yeah, stunt the growth of the, what, what I'm about to say. It's supposed to stop your hair from receding right. and then promote new growth. That's what it's supposed right. to do. So, if, if a person just does the plasma, where are they pulling this from? Same area. They're not pulling hair, they're pulling blood for the plasma. They're pulling the blood from where, though? Your arm. Okay, so they pull it from your arm, yeah. mm-hmm. and then they just inject it in your scalp. And it's supposed to be like a treatment, so it's not like a one-time thing. Now, how much does that cost? You, 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 you don't know. Person. Okay. I'm just going to get the whole shebang. Right. 
<laughs> well, see, you know, the, the okay, the reason that I this even came to my attention was because one day I saw your mm-hmm. Facebook post. Mm-hmm. No, no, no. It, it was, was on Instagram. Instagram. Mm-hmm. It was an Instagram post and you had like a before and after and when you had it done and you had this picture thing, you you, you had this long caption about moment of transparency right. and you were just talking about how, you know, your hair receding or thinning was a was a point of insecurity for mm-hmm. you and you know, so this is like really a big deal that you had posted this picture yes. on Instagram and it had all these likes it and comments and shit up under there. I was like, Whew. But you had this bandage wrapped around your head. Is that the thing that yes. they gave you? <laughs> so you had this thing around your head and across your your hairline, and I can tell you were in front of a, a ring light so yeah. we could really see it. Yeah. And you had like these dots mm-hmm. like that, where they had put that was yeah. That was the area. That was the area where they had created Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So you, when you went and you told them you wanted it to come down some, yeah. and to fill it in. Yeah. So I didn't necessarily need my hairline to come down because this area is okay. You know, it goes straight down, but it's the sides that needed to come down to meet. You know where my hairline. So for those of you, of course, you can't see it, right? But like in the cowlick area, mm-hmm. if you know what I mean, it's like mm-hmm. it's like where the points are. The corners. The, the corners. <laughs> yeah. Where the barber will sometimes take you yes, back. Yes, yes. I had Slide to cuss a barber out the other yeah. day about that shit. Yeah. Stop, but stop taking me back. I've always had a cowlick on this side, but as I've gotten older, it has started to thin. Yeah, that's how. And it my dad said to me a couple years ago. He said, "Curry, you need to stop getting them lines. They taking your line back." And that's what people always tell you, but I think it's I don't, genetic. I think it's. Yeah. I don't think that a barber can. I think a barber can definitely cut your line back, yeah. but I think your hair is going to grow back. If it's, if it's you know gonna, what I'm saying? Yeah. It's going to grow back. Mm-hmm. Um, but the men of my boldness and those male traits, those patterns or pe- uh, male pattern baldness, it mm-hmm. tends to run on the mom's side. I think that's a trait mm-hmm. on the mother's side. Mm-hmm. But the men on my mother's side are not. They're not bald? No, they're not bald. Oh. And they're not thinning. So I'm like, well, how did I... Yeah. <laughs> Who gave me this? <laughs> so a few years ago, I actually um, cut my hair bald. Mm-hmm. It was longer than a few years. About four or five years ago, I cut my hair bald just to see how I would look, mm-hmm. just in case I had to do right, it. Right, right, right. And so I was like, okay, you know, it was fine. You know what I'm saying? I posted a picture on Facebook and all these people were like, oh my God. Yeah. You know, so they loved it. But it that too is a lot of work. That is. Yeah, that's because I don't want little stubbles like I don't want right. you to see the little stubbles yeah. growing back and if I cut my hair bald now it would still it wouldn't look like I had like balding spots it yeah. wouldn't look like that it would just look like I just chose to cut my hair bald mm-hmm. but that's a lot of work because yeah. I, I want my I don't want you to see like stubbles mm-hmm. growing back and that kind of thing and for me that's something that I would want to do later in life yeah it was because sick. Cause it, it it to me I think it I think balding for me it makes me look older I think it tends to make a person look older sometimes sometimes not all the time yeah some I've seen some people um that yeah it actually added to them it added yeah, to them you like oh okay you know, oh, okay you are forty two right. <laughs> hey. oh, okay hey right <laughs> so it was just like uh but for me the main thing was it just it I was having to shave my hair like every day every day. Every other day. Okay. Oh, but that second day, I could feel it. Yeah. I could feel it coming back. And I'd be like, oh, damn, I, I'm going to have to do this to tomorrow. Do yeah. And I just didn't really like that. You know, it was just way too much. And, I mean, obviously, with a bald head, I would still, you know, just be able to do that myself. Yeah. You and then money. maybe once a week, I could go to the barber where they could line up my beard and that mm-hmm. kind of thing. Because I could even trim that myself. But it's nothing like the line from a barber. Like, right. they give you that crisp yeah. line. So, yeah. I could still do that. But, like, that was that's, like, an alternative that I wanted to do later. Mm-hmm. But I really am interested in this process. I keep saying that I'm going to call to mm-hmm. at least go and get a consultation. Yes. Because, again, when I had the conversation with Michael Ray mm-hmm. about the man weaves, he was like, well, you know. And I was like, well, how much is this shit going to cost? Mm-hmm. A man weave. Right. And he was like, well, you know, it just depends. You know, I have to do a consultation. Like, he wouldn't give me a definitive answer. Yeah. You know, when somebody <laughs> tells you some shit yeah, like you that. you know it's expensive. <laughs> you know it's expensive. And he, he was saying that those man weaves pretty much, I think he said, and again, you can go back and listen to it. I can't really remember what he said, but I want to say he 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 told me that they last a couple weeks, like a couple weeks. Oh, I thought you was about to say months. No, I heard they last a few months. That's what somebody is it? Me. Maybe maybe there's a couple months, but see, I wouldn't want that glue and shit up under my head. Like I go <laughs> and I to feel like it's, it's itching and smelling, and, and, yeah. smelling, and then I was like, well, what does it do to your skin? True. And see, I'm not bald. He was bald. I'm right. not bald on the top of my head. My shit is just thin. Mm-hmm. And so, with him, his was bald. Right. And so, 
it's like glued to skin. Mm-hmm. My so like the hair that I do have, I don't need you gluing nothing right. to that because that's gonna damage. Hell yeah. yeah, I don't need you gluing to that. Yeah. So he said that you know he, because he's so quote unquote high maintenance, he does his maybe he does his like every few days. Mm. He redoes his because he he wants his to be really neat and he said it's just really quick. He just does it and boom, he out the door. But for somebody who's paying, and I think it's like a couple hundred dollars. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? A a wop. Because you got to go back in. Okay, you get the man weave. They fix it up. Okay, first first week is fresh. Next week, you need to go back into a barber. Can you just go to a regular barber? Well, no, because see, the thing is, when he does the weave, he cuts your hair too. I know, but next week, the hair under the man we So are, either you can you go know, back to him and let him cut, yeah, that's cut what it I'm saying. or go re, to somebody re, else. Refade it or however it's right. style Right. That's a lie. Yeah. <laughs> and I ain't got that kind of time for all that kind of shit. But again, to, to earlier, to the point that I made, I'm not bald on the top of my head. Yeah. So that is not an option for me anyway. Right. It would be just like a woman who gets all of them tracks in her hair and she gluing that shit to her yeah. hair. And, you it know, you're it pulling, out. it starts taking it out. Yeah. For me, I just was thinking about... Um, me working out, mm-hmm. I go to the I gym, like all that sweat and shit yeah. up under there, start itching. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and you walk by somebody and they're like, "What is that? Sw- <laughs> What's that smell?" <laughs> and you can't just get rid of it. Smell like it's- vinegar. <laughs> you know what I mean? So yeah, yeah, and, and and he was just a, but as soon as his starts looking a little ratty, he 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 redoes it. Mm-hmm. So like his is always but very. He neat. has that advantage. He has that advantage. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And the thing is, he's already buying supplies for clients, so it's easy for him to just take some of the supply right. to just use for sh- himself. It's not yeah. even. Even like he's buying it for himself because mm-hmm. he can take some from the supply that he's using exactly. to to do other clients. I do have a question. What's that? So, uh, are you insecure about the hair, or is it not really something Me? that bothers you? Yeah, because you do have the option of ball. I, I thought about the baldness, but it just I don't think that works for me. My head shapes are funny. Yeah, you are kind of. Right. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, am I insecure? I don't know if I'm insecure. Well, does it bother you any bit? Of course, granted. I definitely think about it. Okay, okay. I definitely think about it. Um, I guess there is a point in me that kind of feels like because I will only I will I like to take pictures on my left side. Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay. So I guess if right because I'm it's it's more pronounced on the right side. (laughs) So I think I do think about it in that sense. Mm But I wouldn't say that I'm insecure. Yeah, because you don't try to like hide it. You know, you don't wear no, hats or anything. no. Uh uh-uh. uh. Um, I guess it's just something that's there. You know, it's just something that's there. And but but I do feel like my left side is my good <laughs> side. <laughs> so when I take pictures, I want to take pictures yeah. from that side. <laughs> Hold um, on. And if I happen to get put on that right hand side, I try to turn my head. <laughs> Kind of slightly, <laughs> but well, I think I think about it too. Like if somebody, is, but I'm tall, mm-hmm. but I kind of think about it too. Like if somebody is towering over me, over or if I'm sitting down, right, 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 and somebody's walking behind me, I kind of wonder, well, are they looking at my yeah. scalp? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Are they looking back here? Right. You know what right. I'm saying? So I just think about it. Yeah. But I do find, and I've talked about this before on my um, on my Facebook Live. Mm-hmm. But I do color my hair. Now I don't color my beard. Okay. My beard, I'm fine with the gray. I, I don't care about the gray. Mm-hmm. For me, I started, actually, I started coloring my hair even before the thinning shit started so happening. you got but, gray hair? Or is it, like, really gray? Or No, I may have a couple strings okay, in my okay, scalp. Okay, okay. So you I, got, like I got, I got, Leah, I started getting gray in my, I used to wear a goatee, so I started mm-hmm. getting gray in my goatee mm-hmm. probably around th- maybe 30. Oh, wow, okay. Maybe. Sheesh. Is that it was like a two? Mm-mm. It may not even been thirty. It may have been about thirty-two. I don't. It was like one or two. It was very yeah. few. Yeah, yeah. But I, I think I was like thirty. Mm-hmm. I do think I was like thirty, thirty-two, something like that. But in my scalp, I've only had like a string or two. Now okay. I might have a few more now. Yeah. But because yeah. I, I know I got a few on my on my sides and mm-hmm. stuff like that. But I only had like a handful. But the reason that I started coloring my hair was because I have a dusty, sandy brown color hair. Mm. And I, you know, you can see it on my arms, but like, I, I never thought that color was nice. It just didn't look rich. Yeah, it just didn't yeah, look, you know what I'm yeah. saying? And so when I would get a haircut, it would just kind of look blonde, like <laughs> yeah. almost, you know what I'm saying? Not really. When I, when I was young, it was almost reddish. Wow. But as I've gotten older, it got darker, but I just wanted it to be a darker color. So I started coloring my hair. Yeah. But then I've, as it started to thin and stuff like that, it helps 
thick in it mm-hmm. and give it the illusion mm-hmm. yeah. that it's thicker. Because even like my barber, he does those fibers and stuff. Okay. But sometimes I don't want that because a lot of times I'll go to the gym after the barbershop right. or... And you sweat it out. Yeah, or when I come from the... Like he, he washes my hair mm-hmm. at the barber and mm-hmm. then he cuts it. And a lot of times I wash my hair again afterwards. So it's like save your fibers. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Now, it's, now if I'm going somewhere straight from there, then yeah. okay, you can go ahead and do it. Like if I'm going to meet somebody, right. you know, friends or whatever for drinks or whatever, mm-hmm. fine, go ahead and do it. But other than that, you can save that. That's true. That's true. But they, a lot of times they want to use it because they're like, they want that crisp. It, they want that crisp mm-hmm. look. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? But by the time I get home and throw my collar in there right. and put my grease in it, <laughs> we good. And lay it down. I'm good. But you know, but this was a conversation that I wanted to have, and even though it required me to put myself out there, um, I thought it was important because I know I'm not the only one that thinks yes. like this. You know what I'm saying? I know there are a lot of guys that are listening to this yeah. that are like, "Damn, my shit thinning too." Right. And you sitting there lying to yourself, trying to pretend like your shit ain't thinning, and mm-hmm. your shit is thin. Um, yeah. You in denial? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You trying to pretend like your shit ain't thin, and, and you know, but there are options. Or either that you are okay with going bald. Everybody's not okay. With Everybody's going not okay because I want my shit. Yeah, yeah. And I want my hair. I feel like uh, that's probably going to be a second conversation, but it needs to be a level playing field. Just like a woman don't want to go bald, what makes her mm-hmm. or other people think that a guy wants to go bald? Like right. what makes them think just because a lot of other people choose that option doesn't mean I want it. Right. You know? <laughs> and and we were originally for. The those of you listening, we were originally supposed to have this conversation yeah. with Michael Ray mm-hmm. so that you guys can have the the option so you can hear the um, about the man weave. Yeah. And you can also hear about this hair trend hair transplant process mm-hmm. so we I wanted it to happen but scheduling just didn't allow it to happen so we had to do them separately yeah. now I wonder if in terms of the cost because you were saying it's about $4,000 I know it depends on how much you need done mm-hmm Oh, yeah. That's but I wonder insane. if the Jamie Foxes and LeBron James of the world, if they're paying $4,000 or in that same price range. You know what I'm I saying? I believe so. They're probably even paying more because I'm sure they want, I want the best. They probably, I right. Want the top of the line. Like, right. I want the best. But. And they're probably going to some doctor that really yeah. know what the it's, hell he's doing. Because <laughs> a lot of just, people don't even realize that Jamie Foxx had it done. Yeah. I didn't until I started researching. Like, if you start Googling people. If you Google yeah, Jamie yeah. Foxx, you'll see that square, crazy yeah. looking hairline. And now yeah. look at it now. Yeah. yeah. His shit is yeah. amazing. Yeah. And I actually was at his house in September. Some friends of mine in LA, mm-hmm. I was out there for a signing. Mm-hmm. And some friends of mine, in LA are friends with him right. and his sister like they've known him for years and so we went to a, a party at his house mm-hmm. and he wasn't there when we got there oh, there was a bunch of people in there the mm-hmm. sister wasn't even there oh wow okay and it was just like a bunch of people in there already I'm like what the hell mm-hmm. and I'm like this is a liability <laughs> like right. can you imagine something happening here yeah but anyway um, next thing I know is a bunch of people in the house and mm-hmm. you know it was supposed to be like a potluck like a brunch type thing I'm in there starving because mm-hmm. you know food coming at different points some people coming over there to cook their food yeah and next thing I know, I look up and he's standing behind me. You know what I'm saying? And, and I and I didn't even realize that he had had that hair done. Yeah. yeah. I mean that process. And done. it makes you look so much younger. Like that's the big thing for some people. Going bald helps some look younger. Mm-hmm. For some guys, keeping your hair helps you maintain that. And those of you that you know when it's it's it's, it's fading and it looks like it's gone, just go ahead yeah. and cut it off. Yeah. Yeah. You're looking like a bird and pecked yeah. in your head, and it's just looking all tattered. When it's too far back, yeah, sometimes it's like just let it go. Now, who was your barber, and why did he cut your hair like that? And actually you know had to, had the nerve to line yes, it. Yes, in the middle of your forehead. At that point, you're like, okay, just <laughs> let it go. Let it go. <laughs> you know, and then you know, putting that black stuff in it. Yeah, too much. Trying to yeah, mm-mm, yeah, looking like tar. But I did have my days when I was using the fibers of not really knowing what I was doing. You would and buy the fibers? Yes, I, I, I purchased it online. When I found out about it, it was like Kabuki. Um, there's also, what, it's another one out there. Now, how They're much is similar. It? They're fairly inexpensive, like $14 for a container. Mm-hmm. Um, and it'll probably last you maybe like six months or so. Now, how do you put it on? Um, so, this was in the beginning when oh, I first apply it. Yeah, you just, they have like, it's almost like a salt shaker. So I was just dabbing it across my head and then going back. So you be in the mirror just dabbing it? First, yeah, when I first. But now they've advanced, thank God. Now they have it like with a pump that comes It's like a pump. Yeah, that's what my barber has. it sprays more evenly across there. But don't you have to cover like 
your forehead or whatever so it doesn't go there you wanted to not necessarily um barbers do that just so they won't have a big mess to clean up uh-huh. um but i tend to just once i spray it on um you can then put some spritz or something to hold it to in hold place, it in place and then go back and edge it up and it looks perfectly even you know oh only thing too i want to add and then you I go jump in a say. swimming pool or a beach yeah, and no, it no, 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 out. no 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 <laughs> but it typically holds honestly like even if you're like getting slightly wet it'll do okay well maybe i'll go ahead and get some of the uh spray and use that at the house yeah yeah but listen if you're gonna get the spray don't overdo it because then we're gonna know you use <laughs> right, the spray too don't, don't overdo it people going through the spray in two weeks yeah. it's supposed to last six yeah, months exactly <laughs> don't overdo <laughs> it because we're gonna know it you know shh sh- Everywhere and this shit will lay down on your pillow too. So exactly. you gotta you gotta lay and sleep right. with your cue <laughs> or get your do rag. Yeah, that's true. Um, I was gonna say so with African American men, the texture in the back of our head, like mm-hmm. the hair texture in the for our hair in the back is different from the hair in the front. Mm-hmm. So that's an issue that I ran into. I'm pretty sure other people that both times decision. or the first time, both times. Okay, because the texture is totally different. So I typically tell my barber to cut it like really low so that the hair will blend in because right. if as my hair gets thicker you can just tell you the can difference. see that there's yeah, a difference in the like, pattern okay this is laying this way this is sticking up this is very fine so it's it that's the only because they pull the hair from your kitchen mm-hmm. men got mm-hmm. kitchens too yeah man. yeah it, and it's laying a certain right. way versus this and hair so you here. train the hair on the front right. of your head right so that's the only thing you may run into and depending on the hairstyle that you have you know um, most people probably have it like a little low haircut. So, so how often do you use the fibers? Do you use it every day? Uh, it depends on how I'm feeling. Um, if I want, like, it depends on how the haircut is as well. If it's uh, like really close to my scalp, then I'll use it just to fill it in, make it even mm-hmm. all over. So, are you insecure about it? Sometimes, um, sometimes I don't. I really don't care because um, it used to be worse than this. So sometimes I am a bit insecure, um, even now with the procedure done. Mm-hmm. Um, but so how does your insecurity show up? Mm, just rather put on a hat versus, you know, sometimes I'm too lazy to even put the fibers in or do. And is that stuff. the first thing that you look at when you take a picture for Instagram, per se? Uh, Are you looking at your scalp first? I'm kind of like you with that. Like if it angled a certain way, I'm like, OK, that looks a little rough. So let mm-hmm. me uh, put some fibers in or something. If I'm doing a live on Instagram or anything like that, yeah, I'm putting fibers in or wear a hat, you know, so, um, yeah. <laughs> Uh, it definitely still it's it's still there, um, and it's probably always going to be there. Even if I go back and get another procedure done, I feel like there's still going to be a part of me like it's not just right anymore. You know, really? So, yeah, I think that's just a reality I have to deal with. I can improve on it, but I think the reality is I want how it used to be back, and it's never going to return. You know, I sometimes wonder because, like I said, male pattern baldness does not run on my mom's side, and I believe the trait. Is a is a is a trait that follows your mother's side of the family, mm-hmm. but I was always ascribing my thinness to you know like when I was in my twenties I used to wear cornrows. Mm-hmm. You couldn't tell me shit. <laughs> Do you hear me? Oh thug. <laughs> what? And I got a nice little grade of hair too. Uh-huh, uh-huh. I used to wear them cornrows. And, you know, I'm from Maryland, so I had them butter Tims mm-hmm. on. I had just started working out, so I had a little bicep and a little pectoral muscle popping through. Uh, and, yeah, I had my goatee. Uh, couldn't tell you nothing. You know, couldn't tell me shit. Mm-hmm. And um, I used to wear those I used to wear those cornrows, and I sometimes wonder if they were just pulling that shit too much. You think so? It probably, I yeah, because the, the girl that used to cut, I mean, they used to um, braid my hair. She'd be like, oh, you're so tender-headed. Like, I'd be sitting there curled up right. when she'd be braiding so my tight. hair. It was so tight. But now you see guys, they'll line the front of their hair, yeah, I see that. Yeah. and they'll have them shave the front down, mm-hmm. and they'll start the braids back a little Is bit. Is that for that reason? Or yes. That was, I thought maybe that was just some style. That came I mean, out. I think they adapted to the yeah. style, but I think it was primarily yeah, so that they... So. But my thing is, if it's going to pull it, it's going to pull it, and then you're going to be patchy in the middle. Right, right. <laughs> you, right you're still right, going to be right. patchy. That's true. That's but, true. you know, so I sometimes wonder if I had... If I never got those braids like that, if I didn't if wear, you damaged it. yeah, I mean, and I didn't wear braids very long, but maybe you should try the plasma and see. Maybe I start, think I'm start, gonna look start into there it first, and then see if it. Mark, you think I just got money to be throwing away? I mean, you got the coin. Go and do look. the go and do the plasma. <laughs> yeah, and then turn around. If that doesn't work. That doesn't work. <laughs> go back and do the damn uh, <laughs> implant. <All> right. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm the Groupon king. I look for this place on on Groupon. Was it on there? No. Oh. Because, you know, because I had, like I said, I had LASIK surgery and I had been looking to have my eyes done for a while. 
and I never wanted to pay what I was what I would see. Right, right. And then one day, a friend of mine was like, "Oh yeah, it's on Groupon." I said, "You lying?" <laughs> when I say I went on that Groupon and snatched up that oh, laser package, perfect. right? And I went and got my eyes done. But like, but you know, that's been almost two years. That's been about two years mm-hmm. now since I had it done. And so it was almost a process of remembering that I had it done because right. like when I would come home, like it used to be like such a chore. To have to take my car, like if I was very, very sleepy, very, very tired, it would be like a chore for me to come home. I would dread it. Like, oh my God, I gotta go ahead and take these contacts yeah. out because you gotta clean them and then you put them in the thing. And, then, uh, and sometimes I just want to go home and just take my quick shower, jump yeah, in the bed, yeah. and be at peace. <laughs> but once I had it done, I'm telling you, probably like the first month mm-hmm. after I had it done. I still would be like, oh, damn, I got to go home. And I'm like, oh, wait, I don't have to take my contacts out. You know what I'm saying? I would wake up and yeah. I was able to see. And yeah. I'd be like, oh, damn, I don't even need contacts. Right. Like, that was a whole nother expense whole that I didn't have life. to buy anymore. Yeah. Like, I was just like, oh, my God, this is amazing. Mm-hmm. So I think to your point where you were saying, like, you still kind of think about it. Like, when you take pictures, you know, you kind of look at it and, yeah, you know, yeah. kind of feel a little insecure. I think over time, you'll probably eventually stop. Just- yeah. yeah, you'll probably stop thinking about it. Possibly. But you know, like, those people that start those plastic surgeries, they're never satisfied, you know. I was thinking about back, that, too. go back. Oh, it's You're going to keep perfect. going and fucking with Right. Me. Like, I right, just a little bit more. Bring it out just a little bit, you know. And then you're going to look like you didn't had needles right. across your head. <laughs> stitches or something across your just forehead. A fool. Because, you know, they'll take your money. Right, right. They'll keep taking your money. So you have a consultation, and then do they schedule you out? Do you have to prepare before you go? Because, like, when I had my LASIK surgery, that's the only thing I can really... Because I've never really had... I've never had a surgery. surgery yeah. This is the closest to a surgery I've ever had. So... I went in for the consultation, and then they had to schedule me. I had, like, three different consultations first mm-hmm. because they have to measure your eyes. Okay, so that's a lot. Different. Right. So you go in, and they have to measure the shape of your eyes because mm-hmm. everybody's cornea is shaped differently and just whatever. So they have to measure it, mm-hmm. and then you have to have a week out of your contacts if you're a contact lens wearer because mm-hmm. the contact lens has changed the shape of your eyes. Oh, wow. I didn't know yes. that. Yes. Okay. So you have to come out of the contacts for about a week. So is there some, some sort of a preparation with this? No, not really. Uh, once I went in uh we talked she drew the line on uh so you had a con- that was your consultation mm-hmm. okay yeah they drew the line um she asked me uh when was i available to do it i said uh whenever you guys have an opening she was like we have an opening this sunday you want to come in and knock it out they opened like, on sunday right well they wasn't but they decided to come in to uh to accommodate me um oh, they wanted your money right so um I mean that's a four thousand dollar check, so um, right. Well, we're not usually open on right. Sunday, but you know, but we will. So you pay them all at once. They don't have a payment plan. Yeah, they do have a payment plan. So you can do what's called care credit. Um, mm-hmm. and that, you can use that for anything like. Contract. But you have to have good credit. Right, you do have. Don't to go in there thinking that right. people gonna give you. Don't think you're gonna go in there and pay them five hundred dollars and they're gonna exactly. put it on your credit report. No. So um, I opted in. Actually, I think for both top. No, the other one was a different company. But both times I use credit in order to pay for them and mm-hmm. pay the loan off. Um, and uh, so, what is it like a monthly payment? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Based on how much you put down. You, I didn't put anything down. Oh, you, so you just paid every month yeah. until the four thousand was paid mm-hmm. off. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. So how much was the payment? It's like one sixty seven. That's not bad. Yeah, it's not bad at all. That's yeah. not when, bad. When you think about something that's affecting how you overall feel right. about yourself. Oh, yeah. Now what happens if you stop paying though? They can't come back and take I mean, your hairline. I'm mean, airbag, but it'll mess up my credit. But if, just if you're okay with that, you know some people don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather pay my dues though, just in case I need to go back next time right. and get something else done. Um, so yeah. So you would go back to the same place that I you went to the would. second time. I definitely would again. Yeah, that's where I plan on going to. So were you able to go to have this by yourself, or you had yeah, to have yeah. somebody take yeah. you? Pick First you time they did tell me that when I got done in Virginia, they did tell me to have someone to. to um, to come and pick me up just in case I was still drowsy but mm-hmm. when I got because they do put Atlanta, you under right when I got it done in Atlanta I was uh, pretty good to drive home they put you under both times mm-hmm. um, one thing to keep in mind though once you have the procedure done of course the little hair fibers are in your head what the transplant hair and um, so you want to be mindful like if you're in the shower the first week not to shampoo that area because you can easily take them out so they have to have time to take root so that they can actually start just like hair system. like hair is lock mm-hmm. like when somebody's locking their hair like you yeah. can't wash your hair and stuff like that yeah. right away okay. you can't go and get a haircut either obviously so weird thing I got that procedure done right before my birthday so um, I was 
I wasn't really timing it correctly, so and I wasn't expecting them to be so uh, available so soon. So I got the procedure for to make an appointment, to right. schedule an appointment. Yeah, so I got the procedure done, and the week after that was my birthday. So I just talked to my barber. Was like, hey man, I just got hair transplant surgery. Vanity. Yeah, vanity. I had to get a haircut. You could have just wore a hat. I couldn't. It was. It didn't go with my suit. Mm -mm. <laughs> I actually looked. Well, then for you should have got. Cap. You should have got you a nice little head wrap. <laughs> I didn't even think about that one now. You should have got your nice little head wrap. But thank God he was very delicate with the haircut. He was like, I got you. And he's even, of course, he saw the progression of the hair growing back as he's cutting my hair. He's mm -hmm. like, man, this is crazy. I'm seeing your hair growing back. You know, like, mm -hmm. you know, so it's, it's, it was pretty cool. How long do they tell you before you to, to, to take before you can actually wash your hair? Uh, I think on that second week you can actually you start can wash washing because it. you're gonna it's gonna turn into scabs, of course, and then once they fall out, you're pretty much good to go. They just don't. They gonna turn into what scabs? Like you know, scabs? Yeah. When you have you gonna have scabs in your? Yeah, it's a sore. Oh, now see, you didn't tell me all of that. <laughs> it's a sore. It's just gonna be little little spots here. And there. So wait, are they cutting your scalp open? Kind of sorted. They, how are they gonna put the hair in there? Wait a minute. Okay. Well, see, I'm only talking about doing the plasma first. Okay. So well, that's just look. an joke. Cause see, I have keloidal skin. <laughs> what does that mean? You ever see people with them earrings with behind their ears? They got that oh, big chunk of meat. Now I don't have that. Okay. <laughs> I got my ears pierced, but I didn't get that. <laughs> but I was bit by a dog when I was 14, and I have a kilo, two keloids on my calf. Oh man. So, yeah, we're just going to do the regular injection for you. Which, you know, results from wounds. Now, I don't need no keloids across the uh, top. See, that's what I'm saying. See, that's going to mess you up. Right. And see, when I was a kid, when I got these keloids on my legs, I was bit by a dog when I was 14. Mm -hmm. And because I was 14, I was obviously shorter. Mm -hmm. But keloids is basically the result of overhealing. Mm -hmm. Your body is just overhealing. Mm -hmm. And so the scar is on the outside. Mm -hmm. And so it's just like a little raised... Yeah, yeah. Scar on my leg, on my calf. Yeah. And so I was very insecure about that too when I was 14. Wow, really? Like to the point that I wouldn't even wear shorts. <laughs> Do you hear me? That's crazy. I wouldn't even wear shorts because <laughs> what really traumatized me, I didn't want people to look at it, but what really traumatized me, I was a freshman at Hampton University mm -hmm. and I was in the lunch line, I was in the cafeteria, and these two girls were standing, and I had on shorts, and these two girls were standing behind me in the line, and one of them was like, oh, look at his leg. And you heard Look it. Look at that scar on his leg. Like, yeah, I was, yeah. and I turned around, and I, and I turned around and looked at her like, bitch, you can't whisper. <laughs> First, I looked at her like that, but yeah. then I kind of positioned myself so the other girl couldn't see it. Yeah. And they kept trying to move so they could see. <laughs> oh her. my goodness! <laughs> and so that traumatized yeah, me. Yeah. So, yeah. so at the time, I was, uh, what was I? I think I was eighteen. Like I was freshman year, so I was eighteen. So that traumatized yeah. me. So I would not wear shorts for nothing. Wow. And people would be like, Craig, aren't you hot? Why don't you wear shorts? Uh -uh. I said, oh, I don't wear shorts. Uh -uh. <laughs> and the only time I would wear shorts is if I was on vacation, like my family and I, we would go. Right. Boring. Yeah, and, and I didn't give a damn if we were out of the country, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, or somewhere at the beach. No, no especially, no shade to the white people, but you know, y'all be on the beach, body right. a wreck. But booty. Right. Cellulite everywhere. So I didn't give a damn about my scar on my leg when I was somewhere, you know, like yeah. that. But domestically, I wasn't wearing no shorts. That's funny. But then it just, again, as you get older and, you know, you, you know who you are and, you know, your insecurities kind of subside. Yeah. I started wearing shorts more. I didn't really care. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But, yeah, I, I wanted to have plastic surgery. Oh, listen, when I was 14, 15, my oh, mother took for, me for, for the, the scar on my oh, leg. Wow. My mother, because I was trauma, I didn't want, I didn't like it. So my mother actually took me to see, yeah, oh, I was going to have that shit done. But... <laughs> What said there was an inner voice that kept saying to me, Craig, even at I think I was like 15, 16 when I went to see this plastic surgeon. I can't remember how old I was now. Mm -hmm. But there was even an inner voice then that said, Craig, this is pure vanity. It's not that serious. It's not, yeah, that, serious. It's not that serious. And what happened, I had to have been about 16 or 17 because I remember driving and I didn't have a car yet. So I must have been about, because I got my first car when I was, I was like 16. Mm -hmm. But anyway, I remember driving to pick my mother up and I remember being in her car and I remember there was a guy standing on a corner. He was waiting to cross. Mm -hmm. And I remember he had on shorts mm -hmm. and he had one prosthetic leg. Oh, wow. And I was thinking like, now you made it tell me he, he is missing a whole leg. A whole. And you got your leg, yeah. but it just happened to have a, a keloid yeah. on, a yeah. low keloid. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, you were really going to go and get it? Oh, wow. Get that removed? And I just kept thinking because when we went to see the, um, the dermatologist, she was like, well, 
what you really need to do is just go ahead and have this injected with steroids mm-hmm. and it would flatten it out. Oh, okay. But she said, it's going to burn and it's going to sting. And, and I just kept thinking, steroids? What if that shit traveled through my bloodstream and mm-hmm. go to my... Extra stuff. Yeah. Just overthinking just, it. I was just like, what if it go to my bloodstream and go to my heart and kill me? Yeah. All because you're trying to be vain. <laughs> right. And then I saw that guy standing on the corner with a whole prosthetic leg on with some shorts on. Yeah. I said, if he don't give a damn if people see that, because right. he had the mechan- he had the metal yeah. one. Yeah, I know. He had saying. a metal leg. And I was like, if he don't give a damn about that, why are you caring about a scar? So that was one of the things that kind of helped me Mm -hmm. over time become more comfortable about it. So the same is true with this. So it's like, are you really that insecure about your scalp? And you're going to go and do this. And then they mess around and have some keloids up there. (laughs) Or they do it wrong. And it looks not really wrong, but maybe it doesn't take and then mm-hmm. my shit look fucked mm-hmm. up and then people worse. it calls attention yeah, to my head people yeah. are like what happened to your scalp yeah exactly what to your forehead <laughs> right yeah. so you really gotta think about whether or not it's something that's that important to you yeah but yours looks natural so if I did it I'm gonna yeah. go to your yeah. people yeah they got you they gonna take care but I'm gonna talk to them about that plasma thing yeah. first yeah Cause I'm not. Cause Michael Ray, the one who does the male or the uh, man weaves, mm-hmm. he was like, "No, you're you're a good candidate for that." He said mm-hmm. because you still have your hair. He said right. you still have your head, your hair bed or whatever he called it. Mm-hmm. And I was like, "Okay, well yeah. maybe I'll do it." But that was months ago, and I still haven't been. You'll do it one day, maybe in twenty. 20- 20 maybe maybe that's your year I'm at least going to get the consultation <laughs> this year thank you for listening to this podcast hopefully it uh, gave you some insight maybe it helped you maybe this was something that you've been considering something you've been thinking about mm-hmm. please share this podcast with your friends your family your social media yeah. thank you for sharing this podcast across social media I can't tell you how many times someone has stopped me and said oh my god I love your podcast like I have no idea that they even know who I am but they'll stop me and say "Oh, like yesterday just yesterday mm-hmm. I was in Miami and somebody um, stopped me and said, oh my God, Craig, I love your podcast. I just want to let you know that it really, really helps me. It really feeds me. It really moves me forward. And I mean, I'm really growing from your podcast. He said, I love your topics. So, I mean, that kind of thing just really, really um, yeah. inspires me and it, and it makes me feel good. So it helps when you guys share the podcast. So thank you so very much. I also do a video diary. It's a video diary where you can actually see me in what I'm doing, my day-to-day stuff, um, book signings, whatever it is that I have going on. I'm the, uh, the showrunner for uh, the Queen Supreme Court with T.S. Madison. So you get to see behind the scenes of the show and how we put the show together and that kind of thing. So the video diary, you can find that from my website, which is Craig the Writer Stewart. Everything you can find from CraigTheWriterStewart.com. The ringtones, the books, the Patreon, my social media, Instagram, Twitter, all of that stuff. But the Patreon is Patreon.com backslash Craig the Writer Stewart. Patreon is P-A-T-R-E-O-N. Thank you for listening. Be safe. Keep loving yourself.